And I want to talk about losing your salvation. I'm not going to say there's no such thing as losing your salvation. Because a lot of people that ask their que that question, they're not asking with the intention of, can my mistakes pull me away from God? There's nothing you can ever do that'll pull you away from God if you just come back to him and repent. A lot of people, I feel like they ask with the motive of what can I do and get away with it? People used to say, what can I do to be saved? Now the whole question is what can I do and still be saved? For those of you that don't know me, my name is Josh. I'm a Christian filmmaker and actor, and I make Christian films about the gospel. This is a series I'm doing where I'm recording the entire behind the scenes for my next short film, 2080. A look into the future 56 years from now on what Christianity in the world could possibly look like if we make it that long is gonna be a short film basically that exposes how lukewarm Christianity, how we're doing this now in 2024 slash 2025, how it's gonna affect the future 56 years from now and what that could look like. Before I really start writing the script, I wanna do research and I've been researching a lot just on things like Revelation and Matthew 24 and the end times and you know, just cause we're talking about the future so I'm trying to make it as realistic as possible. But my research basically took me down this rabbit hole of, of what Jesus says about um, the gospel, what Jesus says about false prophets and false teachers and false messiahs. You know, it made me think, guys, are we ready? Like, are we ready for what's coming? The end is, is almost here, guys. And the scariest part is that we don't know when it is. I'm realizing that God will never tell you to do something that he doesn't already give you the ability to do it. The reason why there's so many hard truths in scripture about repent and turning away and laying your sin down and not compromise and shake hands with the world and be a wicked compromiser. The reason these demands are so high is because he, he knows that we can do it because he gave us the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, basically, I'm gonna give you this assignment and I'm not only gonna give you the assignment, I'm gonna give you everything you need to do it. So there's literally no excuse, guys, to be living in sin. There's no excuse to be condoning. And this film is not really going to be talking a lot about living in sin, even though it is. It's mainly going to be talking about the conscious choice, the conscious decision that a lot of us make to compromise, to accept the things of this world. You know, I'm going to say this and um, it's going to offend a lot of people. And to be honest, I don't care. We respect the Pope more than we respect the word of God. We take these religious made up stuff. There's no such thing as praying to a priest to get forgiven of your sins. There's no such thing as purgatory. There is absolutely no such thing as being saved by works. Okay, it's just, I don't care, show me in scripture. We take verses and we twist them. And we take verses and we spit on them. And on the evangelical side, there's no such thing as living in sin there's, that grace may abound. And I wanna talk about losing your salvation. I'm not gonna say there's no such thing as losing your salvation. Because a lot of people that ask their que that question, they're not asking with the intention of, can my mistakes pull me away from God? There's nothing you can ever do that'll pull you away from God if you just come back to him and repent. Nothing at all. There, a lot of people, I feel like they ask with the motive of what can I do and get away with it. People used to say, what can I do to be saved? Now the whole question is, what can I do and still be saved? And guys, the Bible doesn't play around when it says there's gonna be a great falling away. People will leave the faith, people will betray one another. Are we ready for what's coming? Are we ready for when Jesus comes back? Because I look at my own life, this is, get, this is giving me a lot of reflection. Because this film is going to be touching some really hard topics. Revelation is really tough. A lot of commands, a lot of things of repent, turn away, and move forward. But it's made me think of my life, things that I'm struggling with. Today was a particularly really hard day. Very tough day. It can seem hopeless. There's those that want to just live in sin and don't care. That's what this film will be calling out. But then there's those that genuinely want to please God, that have a desire to please him, that have a desire to lay their sin down, that have a desire to accept true doctrine, not this false bullcrap stuff. Sometimes it can feel helpless because on one hand, people live in sin. And on the other hand, you have the righteous who fall seven times and it can be tough. And I was just meditating today and the Holy Spirit just kept whispering to me, man, as he whispers to all of us, I'm nobody special. 
It's just believing in his power. It's believing that the power of the Holy Spirit will give you the ability to do what he commands to do. He says to run from sin. He says to crucify the flesh. Those are high demands, but he would never make those demands if we couldn't do it. He's coming back because eventually the excuse if I tried my hardest is not going to be enough, guys. He's given us the grace, the mercy, the love, but more importantly, he's given us the power and the authority to rebuke every stronghold that the enemy throws at us. So the question is, are we going to live for Christ? Or are we going to bow into the world? Are we going to cave into the system of the world? That's the bottom line, man. It's a decision. It's a choice. It's not complicated. It's not easy, but it's not complicated. The word of God makes it very simple. The main character of this film is going to be someone that is full of pride and someone that refuses to accept the truth of the gospel, the full truth of the gospel. A lot of us have no problem with the gospel. We, we take parts of it and we spit the other parts out. Well, guys, we're not called to call. We're not called to accept parts of it. We're called to accept all of it. And I was thinking about that character and thinking to myself, am I this character? Am I someone that is refusing parts of the gospel? And am I someone that has hardened my heart with pride? Am I someone that thinks I'm owed something that I'm not? Am I someone that is rejecting parts of God's word and accepting others? It was a reality check for me. I mean, if I'm going to be preaching this thing, I better live it. So it's a challenge for me, but for all of us guys, like, let's take the word of God. Let's take this book. Let's take these 66 books, guys, and let's, let's actually live by them. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Let's not sit here and compromise. So accepting all of the word and believing all of the word. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. The next time it's going to be these next few episodes, these next few next processes are just going to be research and reading. We're going to be diving into Revelation. He might even do a Revelation Bible study for the next episode. So stay tuned. You guys have a great rest of your night. Stay safe. Kiss your loved ones. Anyone close to you, let them know that you love them. And of course, much love.